Hello, my name is Mark Sassavet, and I have two problems with this Blackburn bike rack. First, the rack is too heavy. Second, the bike rattles too much when riding over rough roads. It is possible to build a lighter, quieter bike rack out of off-the-shelf items, and I'm going to show you how. The focal point of this video will be the manufacturing process of molding the bottom brackets and the seat post arm. The redesigned bike rack was heavily based on the current design. PVC pipes and connectors form the majority of the rack. 0.84 inch diameter PVC pipe was the slimmest PVC pipe readily available at Home Depot. The dimensions of the rack were originally designed to match the current model. The PVC pipe was cut to specification on a vertical bandsaw. The blanks for the bottom brackets and the seat post arm were also cut to specification on a vertical bandsaw. The bottom bracket was formed by joining two half inch thick acrylic sheets together with electrical tape. The seat post arm was formed by taping four quarter inch thick acrylic sheets together. All acrylic sheets were salvaged from the machine shop at no cost. The first step in the casting process is creating the silicon mold. Equal parts of Umu 30A and B were mixed together for approximately three minutes before being poured over the blanks. Excess acrylic sheets were hot glued together to contain the silicon. It is very important to seal the bottom of the container with hot glue or tape to prevent the silicon liquid rubber from escaping. The seat post arm was more difficult to remove from the mold than the bottom bracket, but the mold was ultimately successful. Parts were cast from Smooth On 300A and 300B. Equal parts of compound A and B were mixed together for roughly 45 seconds before being poured into the silicon molds. The test molds revealed that the solidification process takes away some of the volume of the mixture, so be sure to fill the mold to the brim. The parts solidified within 3 minutes of pouring, but were left in the mold to cool for 20 minutes. Once the casting components cooled, the sharp edges were sanded down. The bottom brackets were mounted to the bike first. The forward and rear sections of the PVC piping were connected and fixed to each other via hot glue. The separate sections were then fixed to the brackets one at a time via more hot glue. Finally, the seat post arm was fixed to the rest of the rack via, you guessed it, more hot glue. After an hour of drying, the rack was removed for spray painting. A metallic paint was chosen to match the silver metallic paint of the bike frame, but any other paint could have been chosen for this part. The bike rack prototype proved to be more successful than I initially anticipated. The hot glue performs the functions of a fastener without the need for an additional tool, and the new rack broke quite well during a brief ride around the block. There was no noise from vibration, and the weight of the rack is merely a quarter of a kilogram. That's 700 grams less than the original Blackburn rack. If this product were to go into full-scale production, I would redesign the PVC pipes to have a thinner diameter, and I would add cutouts into the bottom brackets to aid in anchoring the forward and rear sections of the bike rack. The seat post arm clamp would be circular instead of C-shaped, and the overall appearance of the component will be much sleeker and more aesthetically pleasing. All in all, I consider this prototype project to be a smashing success. I'll be testing the new rack out on the next few rides to the grocery store to gauge the strength of the prototype. Thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoyed my project summary. Goodbye.